Hello everyone, before I start with today's video, I just wanted to share a small news with you. I was recently approached by people representing a top VPN brand owned by an Israeli billionaire. They were very keen for their brand to feature on this channel through a lucrative paid partnership. But it took me just seconds to reject this offer. I wrote to them a polite but very firm note stating that it's our policy to not engage with Israeli businesses in solidarity with my Palestinian brothers and sisters. And this is the mail that I received this morning from the marketing firm representing that Israeli company. Pretty decent mail from them as well, to be honest. Look, I had a very troubled childhood myself, whereby we faced starvation on a regular basis. I was a first university graduate in my family, so I should have been moved by the lust for money and wealth. But I never allowed money to adversely impact my moral compass. Had I allowed myself to choose money over my principles, I would still be one of the movers and shakers in the global corporate media and politics. These are the values that I instill in my children every single day. This is why I am always perplexed by Western politicians, particularly in the West, who allow themselves to be permanently compromised for the want of a few thousand dollars or pounds. As for me, no amount of money, yes, absolutely no amount of money can buy my integrity or stop me from championing humanitarian causes. So let's now return to today's topic, which is quite humbling and remarkable in itself. One of the three winners of this year's Nobel Prize for Chemistry is a Palestinian refugee. Yes, you heard it right. His name is Omar Yaghi, whose parents were forcibly displaced by Israeli terrorists out of their homes in Palestine and they had to find refuge in Jordan. Many years later, one of their sons would go on to become the father of the field in Metal Organic Frameworks or MOF and eventually win a Nobel Prize in his chosen field. Omar explained the hardship of his early days while growing up in a refugee tent in Jordan. This is so, so inspiring. Share this with your children to inspire them as well. Seriously. Oh gosh, your first reaction uh, to the news? Astonished, um, delighted, yeah, overwhelmed. Um, special in so yeah. many ways. Um, you're known as the father of the field of metal organic frameworks. Yes. Uh, yes. You're, I think, perhaps the first Nobel laureate to be born in Jordan. Is I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, very possible. That's very possible. Um, that may very well be. Yes. What a. Uh, what a what a journey you have been on with your chemistry and your life! Amazing. <laughs> it, it has it has. I mean, you know, I I I grew up in a very humble home, and uh, you know, we were um, dozen of us in a in one small room, sharing it with the with the uh, cattle that we used to raise. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yes, and uh, you know, I was I was born to. Uh, in a family of refugees, and uh, my parents barely could read or write. I think my father finished sixth grade, and my mother couldn't even read and write. So, so it's it's quite a journey, and uh, it's uh, science allows you to do it. I mean, science is the greatest equalizing force in the world. Yes, yes, indeed, no. and it, and it, it, it's a testament to the fact that. Talent exists everywhere, and if one just gives it some opportunity to thrive... I agree. Yeah. I agree. Sm smart people, talented people, skilled people exist everywhere. That's why we really should focus on unleashing their potential mm. through providing them with opportunity. Indeed, indeed. And it's, it, it's a huge... <laughs> I'm sorry to catch you when this announcement is... <laughs> no, that's okay. no, 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 that's okay, that's okay. It, 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 it's, it must be extraordinary to have seen this field flourish to the extent that it has. It's just been 30 years since, yeah. you, you know, your first forays uh, into it and... Mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, I started at Arizona State University, my independent career, and uh, my dream was to publish at least one paper that receives a hundred citations. 
<laughs> now, 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 my students say that we have our group has garnered over two hundred fifty thousand citations. So, so yes, it was just totally unexpected. Um, but again, the beauty of chemistry is that if you learn how to control matter on the atomic and molecular level, well, the potential is great, and uh, you know we opened a gold mine. This is another clip of his interview on TRT World. I'm quite emotional to see my refugee parents spend every uh, minute of their time dedicated to their kids and to their kids' education because they saw that as a way to lift themselves and the kids out of a um, challenging uh, situation. My father saw opportunity in sending me off to the U.S. and and much to my objection, um, he insisted that I do that. I wanted to stay in Jordan with my family and finish college there and work there. This uh, recognition is really a testament of the power of the public school system in the U.S. Uh, that takes people like me with major disadvantaged background, um, uh, refugee background, and, uh, and allow you to work and work hard and distinguish yourself. Dr. Omar Yaghi was conferred with the Nobel Prize for creating molecular constructions with large spaces through which gases and other chemicals can flow. These constructions called metal organic frameworks can be used to harvest water from desert air, capture carbon dioxide, store toxic gases or catalyze chemical reactions. The other two winners are Susumu Kitagawa and Richard Robson. In fact, it was Robson who first decided to utilize the inherent properties of atoms in a new way in 1989. He combined positively charged copper ions with a four-armed molecule. This had a chemical group that was attracted to copper ions at the end of each arm. When they were combined, they bonded to form a well-ordered specious crystal. It was like a diamond filled with innumerable cavities. Robson immediately recognized the potential of his molecular construction, but it was unstable and collapsed easily. But it wasn't until 1992 when both Kitagawa and Dr. Yagi began to make path-breaking discoveries in their field. In fact, between 1992 and 2003, both Susumu Kitagawa and Omar Yagi provided this building method with a firm foundation and made a series of revolutionary discoveries. Kitagawa showed, as you can see on the screen, that gases can flow in and out of the constructions and predicted that MOFs could be made flexible. But it was Dr. Yagi who created a very stable MOF and showed that it can be modified using rational design, giving it new and desirable properties. In 1999, Dr. Yagi constructed a very stable material called MOF5, which has cubic spaces. Just a couple of grams can hold an area as big as a football pitch. This news couldn't have come at a better time. What a tribute this is to the victims of genocide in Palestine. And what a slap this is to Israeli terrorists, their racist supporters and their genocidal maniac friends in the West who waste no opportunity to demonize Palestinians by projecting them as terrorists. This user on social media summed it up well when he wrote this, Give Palestinian a lab instead of a checkpoint, a canvas instead of a wall and you will see art, science and humanity reborn. That's it for me. Thank you very much for your support of our journalism. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.